Good evening. Today we are introducing new legislation to keep my promise to you, to stop the boats. My policy is very simple. It is this country and your government who should decide who comes here and not criminal gangs. Now the first step is understanding the nature and scale of what we are dealing with. The number of people entering the UK illegally in small boats has more than quadrupled in just the last two years. Those illegally crossing the channel are not directly fleeing a war-torn country or persecution or an imminent threat to life. They have travelled through safe European countries. They are paying people smugglers huge sums to make this dangerous and sometimes tragic journey. Now, the reason that criminal gangs continue to bring small boats over here is because they know that our system can be exploited, that once here, illegal migrants can make a multitude of asylum, modern slavery and spurious human rights claims to frustrate their removal. And the risk remains that those individuals just disappear into the black economy. Now, that is the reality we must deal with. And with 100 million people displaced around the world, if we do not deal with it now, the situation will just get worse and worse. People must know that if they come here illegally, it will result in their detention and swift removal. Once this happens, and they know it will happen, they will not come and the boats will stop. That is why today we are introducing legislation to make clear that if you come here illegally, you can't claim asylum, you can't benefit from our modern slavery protections, you can't make spurious human rights claims, and you can't stay. We will detain those who come here illegally and then remove them in weeks, either to their own country if it is safe to do so, or to a safe third country like Rwanda. And once you are removed, you will be banned, as you are in America and Australia, from ever re-entering our country. This is how we will break the business model of the people smugglers. And this is how we will take back control of our borders. Now, this bill provides the legal framework needed to deliver this in a way that no other legislation has done before. This is tough, but it is necessary and it is fair. And this legislation will be retrospective. If you come on a small boat today, the measures in this bill will apply to you. And this is just part of what we are doing. I've always been clear that this is a complex problem that can't be solved overnight and will require us to use every tool at our disposal. That is why I've already secured the largest ever small boats deal with France and patrols on French beaches are already up 40%. I also promise progress on enforcement and we've increased raids on illegal working by 50%. I've also negotiated a new deal with Albania which accounted for a third of all small boats arrivals and that's already delivering. We've returned 500 illegal migrants to Albania and we are seeing far fewer come as a result. This shows that there is nothing inevitable about illegal migration. Deterrence works, and with will and determination, the government can get on top of it, and we will. Now, this will always be a compassionate and generous country. It is something that we're all rightly proud of. Just look at how we've welcomed Ukrainians and Syrians from refugee camps and embraced Hong Kongers fleeing the Chinese clampdown. But the current situation is neither moral nor sustainable. It cannot go on. It's completely unfair on the British people who have opened their homes to genuine refugees, but are now having to spend nearly £6 million a day to put up illegal migrants in hotels. It's unfair on the people who come to this country legally to see others skipping the queue. And it's devastatingly unfair on those who most need our help but can't get it 
as our asylum system is being overwhelmed by those travelling illegally across the Channel. If we can't stop the boats, our ability to help genuine refugees in future will be constrained. <coughs> Full control of our borders will allow us to decide who to help and to provide safe and legal routes for those most in need. Now, I understand there will be debate about the toughness of these measures. All I can say is we have tried it every other way and it has not worked. So I say again, my policy is very simple. It is this country and your government who should decide who comes here, not criminal gangs. And I will do whatever is necessary to achieve that. Thank you. It will take some questions from the media. If we could start with the BBC. Thank you, Prime Minister. Chris Mason, BBC News. If by the time of the next general election you haven't stopped the boats, will you have failed? Thanks, Chris. So, look, I, I wouldn't be standing here if I didn't think that I could deliver on this promise. At the beginning of the year, I stood up in front of the British people, made five promises, and one of them was to stop the boats. And since I've had this job, I've spent a lot of time thinking long and hard about how to solve this problem. And I'm confident that the bill we're introducing today will help us do that. It will mean that for the first time, we will have a system whereby if people come here illegally, they won't be able to stay, they'll be detained, and they'll be swiftly removed. And as we deliver on that, people will see that there is no point in coming here. We will have that deterrence effect. But I've also been clear throughout that this is a complicated problem, right? There is no one silver bullet. And the legislation, of course, it's really important, and that's why today is important, but it's just one of the many things we're doing. We need to cooperate with our allies, particularly the French, which is why the deal that the Home Secretary and I worked on at the end of last year is so important, and we hope to continue deepening and strengthening our cooperation with the French and other European allies. It's why the deal we announced with Albania is so important. And I think, it's just pause on that for a second. Albania accounted for over a, around a third of our illegal migrants last year. But because of the steps that we've put in place, the new deal that we've announced, what we're seeing now is that we're returning hundreds of people back to Albania and we're seeing the numbers come down considerably. So that shows to me that if we get this right, it will make a difference. Now, we're in the early stages of it, but we've given it long, hard thought and you know, I said at the beginning of the year that you know, I, I only promise what I believe I can deliver, and I will absolutely deliver on what I promise, and that's what we're going to do today. You said help stop the boats. That's not the same as stopping the boats, is it? Yeah, but all of these things play their part. It's that no one thing is the answer to this question, right? And that is the point. The legislation is absolutely critical. There is no way to stop the boats without this legislation. But this legislation on its own won't do it. That's why we need all the other things that I've talked about as well. All of those things will help us achieve that goal of stopping the boats. But as I said, I, you know, I, promise, I, I promise what I can deliver, and I will deliver what I promise. And that's what we said we would do. That's what we will do. Right, next, we've got ITV. <clears throat> um, Prime Minister, you talked about the importance of swift removal. Uh, more than two-thirds of asylum seekers don't come from Albania. How is it compatible with the British traditions of humanity and compassion that you are criminalising, incarcerating, potentially uh, forcing statelessness, homelessness, destitution on asylum seekers, many of whom are, as you accept, vulnerable and traumatised before you have in place agreements with third countries to which you could move in a swift way, in your words, uh, those asylum seekers. This, this is a country that has always been open, welcoming, compassionate and generous to those in need. <coughs> Just in the last few years, since 2015, we've welcomed almost half a million people to this country, half a million from Ukraine, from Syria, from Afghanistan, from Hong Kong. That's our record. That's our compassion. And everyone should be incredibly proud of that. I am. Uh, but what is not compassionate is to allow the current situation to persist. 
There is nothing compassionate about allowing vulnerable people to perish in the channel. We had a stark reminder of that just a few weeks ago off the coast of Italy when over 50 people died, including children. Right? People being exploited by criminal gangs and smugglers. I was just at Dover earlier today talking to the teams that have to deal with this on the ground, as the Home Secretary and the Immigration Minister see almost every week. Right? There's nothing compassionate about that situation persisting. And there's nothing compassionate or fair about us not being able to help the truly most vulnerable people around the world because our system is being overwhelmed by those who are jumping the queue and coming here illegally. And they are not the most vulnerable. They are traveling through multiple safe European countries. They are paying people thousands of pounds to get here. So look, I want to move to a system where we break that cycle. We deter people from coming here illegally, jumping the queue. And actually, we as a country can then make sure that we decide who we, come, who we bring here, how many, and make sure that we target that compassion, that generosity and support on the world's truly vulnerable people. And that's why the legislation that we're announcing today not only does the things that we need it to do to break the cycle and give us the powers we need to send people back, but it also allows Parliament to set a quota on how many people we would welcome here under safe and legal routes, as we've done so brilliantly in the last few years. I think that's the type of system that would command broad support. Right? And I think that's not just the right thing to do. I think it's actually the moral and compassionate thing to do because the current system is broken and it's not fair on anybody. And the sooner we can put an end to it and focus our support on those who most need it, I think the better off everyone will be. But, but if you can't expel them yet, why do you think the small boats will stop? Well, the, the legislation is a necessary step on being able to return people either to their own country where it's safe to do so or to a safe alternative like Rwanda. And I'd say we already are returning people. You, you mentioned Albania. Albania accounted for a third of all illegal migrants last year because of the, the deal that we struck and the new procedures we put in place. We are now returning hundreds of people back to Albania. And that's right. And that's the right thing to do. Um, we need to focus our resources, focus our generosity and compassion on the world's truly most vulnerable people. That's what I want to do. I think that's what the vast majority of the country wants to do too. At the moment, that's not possible because we're being overwhelmed with people who are jumping the queue, breaking the laws, and that's not right, and that's what we're going to change. Next, Sky. Thank you, Prime Minister. Five years ago, the then Home Secretary, Sajid Javid, said he was going to make this route unviable. Since then, we know we've seen tens of thousands of people in the last five years. Where do you think your predecessors went wrong? Why are you different? And can I also ask, what does success look like to you? Will you be setting targets for where you want the numbers to be in a year's time? So this is look, not about dwelling on the past because the situation has just got far worse. As I said in my remarks earlier, just in the last two years, we talked about when Sajid was Home Secretary, so just in the last <coughs> two years, the numbers of people crossing the channel legally have more than quadrupled, right? That is the scale of what is happening and they're forecast to get worse. And the other thing is not just us, right? So anyone who thinks this is just a UK-specific problem isn't being straight with you. This is happening across Europe, right? Europe last year saw something like 63% increase in the numbers of illegal migrants, one of the highest numbers they've experienced in almost a decade. And that's because globally this is a challenge. And it's only going to get worse unless we do something novel, that we do something bold to try and stop it. And that's what our legislation today does. Now, you know, su success is us stopping the boats. Success is us having a system that people come here illegally are returned back to their own country where it's safe or an alternative. And if we can get that working, as I'm confident that we will be able to, as we already are with Albania, we will see the numbers come down because people will see that it is not worth their while to risk their lives, to pay gangs thousands of pounds for something that ends up not what they expect. And, and that is the system <laughs> that we're going to deliver. Now, We've always said, as I said to the questions earlier, there's no one silver bullet to this. Right, so not only do we need the legislation to be implemented and make sure that, that, that we can implement that as quickly as possible, we also need to cooperate with our allies. We need to make sure that we keep signing returns agreements. We need to step up what we're doing on immigration enforcement as we are and raids are increasing.
are responsible, they are proportionate, and crucially, they're fair. But you're uh, not setting specific targets in terms of the numbers. Well, I think you, look, people will judge us on our results. And as <coughs> I said, we're already seeing the results. Illegal migration rates up 50% since we announced the proposals to do that with uh, Robert at the end of last year. Already hundreds of people being returned to Albania. We're getting the asylum backlog down as well, down by 6,000 just in the last couple of months since we've improved all the processes there. New deal with the French at the end of last year, hopefully further cooperation to come. We promise new legislation. I'm standing here today with the Home Secretary introducing it. So we are, we are continuing to deliver the things that we said, and I'm highly confident that as we keep moving forward, people will see a big difference on this. Right, next, LBC. LBC. Uh, firstly, Prime Minister, uh, you're meeting the French President Emmanuel Macron uh, later this week. Uh, do you accept that in order to be successful with this policy, you are going to need his fulsome cooperation? What are you prepared to offer him in return? And if I may, just very briefly on Sue Gray, do you still have faith in the integrity of her report into Partygate? Look, uh, on, on Sue Gray, as, as you know, the, the Cabinet Office is reviewing the circumstances of her departure, I'm not going to preempt. I'm not going to preempt their findings. So I'm not going to comment further on on that situation. Um, with regard to the French, you know, as you heard me say before, there's no one silver bullet to solving this problem. It's a, it is a complex problem, and we need to use all the levers, all the tools at our disposal. And a crucial one of those is cooperating with not just the French, but also with our other European allies. So I was really pleased after I became Prime Minister, having spoken to President Macron, we managed to get the Calais group up and running. Suella, Home Secretary, attended that. Uh, that's fantastic, because that's not just France, that's other Northern European countries coming together to discuss this issue, the shared challenge that we all face, and how we can work together to solve it. Right, that, that meeting happened, and actually there's some very tangible things coming out of that about data sharing and cooperation of our uh, enforcement agencies, which is great. Specifically with the French, we announced a, a new deal, the biggest deal that we've had for more patrols on beaches, up 40%, significant, uh, and better cooperation and collaboration between our teams. Again, I've just got back from Dover, talking to them about the benefit and the difference of that collaboration works and i'm very grateful actually i put on record my thanks as the home secretary i know she's been over there and spoken to them herself i'm very grateful to the cooperation and support and collaboration of the french teams on the ground they work very closely with our teams and because of the work that they do you know they help intercept around about half of all the attempted crossings and that number varies and on the at the moment it's on the way up which is great news um, but that's part of the conversation that we'll be having on friday is how can we strengthen and deepen and broaden that cooperation uh, but this is ultimately a shared challenge and actually you're seeing across europe you know france is looking at new laws to tighten up their asylum regime germany has appointed uh, a special commissioner on asylum italy is looking at new laws to to talk about how they regulate search and rescue operations in the mediterranean because many countries are facing this the same challenge and actually if we work together it's going to be easier for us to to deal with it particularly on upstream cooperation of our law enforcement agencies because the best thing we can do is try and disrupt the gangs you know, right at the beginning at source before people end up arriving here. And that's the kind of work that we can do more of. And hopefully we'll be having that conversation on, on Friday as well. But I'm very grateful to the teams in France for the support and cooperation that they have given us because it really, it does make a difference. Right, who have we got next? Uh, GB News. Tom Harwood of GB News. Uh, on the face of the bill, the <coughs> Home Secretary says that she is unable to make the statement that the provisions of this bill are compatible with the Human Rights Act, which of course incorporated the ECHR into domestic law. Already legions of lawyers are preparing to tackle you over this legislation. But firstly, are you up for the fight? And secondly, what's plan B if they win? Um, well, look, I've, of course we're up for the fight. I wouldn't be standing here if, uh, if we weren't. But we're actually, we're confident that we will win. And on the Section 191B statement, I think it's really important to, for everyone to recognise there's absolutely nothing improper or unprecedented about pursuing bills with a 191B statement. It absolutely does not mean that the bill is unlawful. We believe that it is lawful, that we are acting in compliance with our international obligations. Uh, 
And we are also meeting our obligations to the British public to make sure that we have control over their borders and that it is them and their elected representatives who are deciding who comes here. Um, but with regard to Section 19.1b, as I say, it, entirely in line with precedent. In fact, a previous Labour government in 2003 used a Section 19.1b uh, statement as they were passing a piece of legislation. You know, we believe we are acting in compliance with international law, in compliance with the ECHR, and if challenged, as you may be, you may well be right. And uh, as we've seen in these matters, we do get challenged. Um, you know, w we will fight that hard because we believe that we're doing the right thing, and it is compliance with our obligations. But to be clear, no plan B. Uh, I'd say we we are we we are confident that we are acting in compliance. Uh, with our obligations. And again, I just point out on the Rwanda policy, which many people said again uh, was wrong, and we expected the challenge <coughs> on it, uh, as you saw recently. We were successful in defending that policy. I think actually unequivocally successful in the High Court. Uh, that policy is now moving to the Court of Appeal uh, in just over a month's time, so we'll await the outcome of that. But again, we are confident in our arguments. We believe we're doing the right thing, and you know, I believe the courts will see that as well. Right, Talk TV. Prime Minister, in your speech there, you said you will do whatever is necessary to ensure that you can stop the boats. To follow on from that question, does that include leaving the ECHR, if necessary, to keep your promise to the public? And if I may, a huge part of this plan is detaining people, often for long periods of time, according to the legislation. How many detention centres are you planning to build? Where will they be? And how many people will they house? So, on, on the two questions, we don't believe it is necessary to leave the ECHR. Uh, we believe that we're acting in compliance with it and acting, meeting our international obligations, but as I said, also meeting our obligations to the British public to have control over our borders and ensure that it's them and their elected government who's in, in control of who is coming here. Um, I believe that we're acting entirely rightly and, and correctly in that regard. Um, and I take those obligations seriously, as does the Home Secretary. And that's why we've worked long and hard to design a piece of legislation that, that is tough, that is novel, that is ambitious, but that is in compliance with our international obligations. Uh, and I'm, I'm confident that it will be effective. Um, with regard to detention, I, I'd, I'd say it, the idea is not to have to detain people for prolonged periods of time. And actually what the bill does is completely change how we process people's claims to stop that from happening. Because part of the problem we've got at the moment is people can frustrate the system because they can make one claim and then down the line they make another claim and then another claim to give you a sense of it. it you know, almost well, more than 70% of people that we detained pending a removal then filed a modern slavery claim. Right? When we put people and told them they were going to go to Rwanda, two thirds of them claimed modern slavery you know, towards the end of a process. And you know, we can't have a system like that, which can be taken advantage of. So what this new piece of legislation today says is that you've got to make your claim right at the beginning, any and all claims that you have. And we will hear it quickly. In fact, there's very few that will be valid under this uh, new system. And we will process them in a matter of days or weeks. Um, so it's not the idea that people are kept here for indefinitely long periods of time. That's not what we want to see. Um, we want a system that is working far quicker than what we have today so that we can swiftly remove people. We do have thousands of de detention places already, and we're in the process of building over a 1,000 more in two different sites. And, and we will do everything that we need to make sure that the bill uh, is delivered and that work has already started. You know, but, we're, but we're very confident in what it does. But crudely, it's not about detaining people here for months on end. It's about processing them very quickly, which the bill will enable us to do, and then removing them. You know, that's the system we want to move to. Times. Uh, Prime Minister, um, the Home Secretary today described the ECHR's interim injunctions on Rwanda fights as opaque and deeply flawed. She said that they are undermining our ability to control our borders. Do you agree? Do you think the ECHR overstepped the mark? And are you prepared to take action around that? Secondly, Simon Case is facing a lot of criticism over his WhatsApp messages, which have been leaked to the Telegraph over Matt Hancock. One of them accused you of being bonkers. Will Simon Case still be your Cabinet Secretary by the time of the next election? Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Steve. Look, on, on um, Rule 39, I should have actually addressed that in the previous question. Yes, uh, you know, the Home Secretary is absolutely right, and in the sense that these Rule 39... Uh, orders are opaque and they don't meet I think what anyone would describe as a kind of natural justice test and that's because they're conducted behind closed doors you don't know the name of the person who's 
sending these things down and we have absolutely no right to apply for the case to be dismissed we have no right to appeal those things aren't formalized as I said they're just kind of handed down by these unnamed duty judges um, it feels like at five minutes to midnight right so that process does seem not appropriate and what we want to do is see reform to that process uh, the attorney general has already had an informal conversation with the court in strasbourg about that i think we believe that other countries you know share some of the the questions and observations that we've had about how that process works i think everyone can get behind the idea that yes of course there should be a court that has due process but that process needs to be fair and if we think that something's being handed down, we should have the right to have the right to know who's doing it and to challenge it and appeal it. That's just, as I said, it's a matter of natural justice. So we will start the process of engaging with Strasbourg to try and get reform uh, to Rule 39. And look, our track record on this is is good, actually. Um, some time ago, we embarked on a similar reform process uh, with the court, particularly on Rule 39, and it resulted in some changes, which are called the Brighton Declaration. Now, I'm not a legal expert, so Swella can probably fill you in on the detail afterwards. Um, but so our track record on this is good, and you know our, our concern is we, sh you know, we can't be subject to a process that doesn't meet simple tests of natural justice, and that's why we want to try and uh, get that process reformed. And I said I'm confident that we'll be able to work with others uh, to do that. Um, and on Simon, look, I, you know, I haven't read all these messages because I've been busy working on this but what I would say is the cabinet secretary has done a great job uh, actually helping with today <laughs> uh, in particular like, he works very hard to support me he works very hard to support the government's agenda and particularly uh, on the issue of tackling illegal migration it's very much a cross-government effort Right. And the work that Robert Sweller and I have been doing over the past few months involves lots of colleagues from across government pulling together so that we can grip and solve this problem. The Cabinet Secretary has been at the heart of coordinating all that work. I'm very grateful to him for that. And I, I look forward to working with him um, for, for a very long time to come, quite frankly. So hopefully that will answer your question on that. Uh, and lastly, we've got the eye. Uh, yes, Prime Minister. Oh, just saying from the eye, you've talked a lot about the deterrent effect of these new laws, but how many thousands of channel asylum seekers do you need to deport before people start getting deterred from making those crossings? And are you confident you have enough capacity in Rwanda, there's only a few hundred places there, and through returns agreements with places like Albania to begin having that deterrent effect quickly once the new laws come in? So look, on, on Rwanda, I think this is co correct a kind of like misconception about the Rwanda thing. It is an uncapped scheme. So everyone keeps saying you've only got 200 places. No, it's an uncapped scheme. So that's, like, everyone should know that. So they should have confidence that that's, um, that's what's happening there. And having just spoken to the Rwandan president the other night, they remain committed to their partnership with us and are looking forward to making sure that it, it can work properly in the way that we all want it to. Um, but I do think that the deterrent effect can be quite powerful quite quickly. Um, I've actually one of MPs in Parliament today, uh, Tim Loughton, was talking about a Home Affairs Select Committee trip that he'd been on to, to France. And actually, when they were talking to some of the people in France who said that after the Rwanda deal was first announced, they suddenly saw a change in behaviour about people who were there uh, who stopped them wanting to come over here and were trying to figure out about staying there. And that was just on the fact that they'd heard about Rwanda when it was announced. Um, but, but also, just look at what's happening in Albania. Right. So we, you know, we worked hard, got a new agreement with Albania towards the end of last year. You know, I made the statement or it was early, early December. Um, we've just started operationalizing that new, agree uh, new agreement, the guidance we've changed to our caseworkers here. And again, it's early days. So, you know, let's look at carried away. But uh, the, the, the signs are very promising. Right. We have now returned hundreds of people, and Robert's been working incredibly hard to, to get people back on planes. So hundreds of people have been returned. Uh, we're also doing comms in uh, Albania, and we are seeing a change in the numbers coming here from Albania and also how our system is treating them when they are here and making it clear that they shouldn't be here and actually they should be refused and sent back. Now, you know, that's only been in place for a, a matter of weeks, but it does give me the confidence that the deterrence can work and will work. And that's why this bill is so important. And that's probably a good note for us to end on, um, because that's what this rests on, right? It rests on the simple premise, I think the common sense, straightforward premise, that if you come here illegally, you will not be able to stay. You will be detained and you will be swiftly removed to your own country if it's safe for you to be sent back there, or indeed a safe alternative like Rwanda. And that system delivered an operational 
will serve as a strong deterrent. It will break the cycle of criminals. And if you spend any time with people at Border Force in Calais or anyone who deals with these people, be in no doubt the people who are doing this are criminals. And people are dying and being taken advantage of because of the system that is now in place. And it would not be right to stand here as Prime Minister and allow that to continue and not try absolutely everything we can to stop it from happening. And that is what we are doing. Right? We have been working long and hard at this. And as I said, it's complicated. It won't be solved overnight. But with will and determination and creativity, we will be able to grip this problem. And with the bills, one part, the cooperation with France is another part, returns, agreements, enforcements, we are doing it all because when I said at the beginning of the year that we would stop the boats, I meant it. And we will keep working until we've delivered that. Thank you very much.